Thank you, Tim. Um, this work is um, a collaboration between the University, um, I'm in the Centre for Biological Sciences, and the NIHR Clinical Translational Infrastructure that we've heard Saul Faust talk about a little bit earlier. And um, we're addressing a, a critical unmet need, which is that we don't have uh, effective therapeutics that, that, are, that are active against microbial biofilms. Just to illustrate the problem, this is a, a, a biofilm of Pseudomonas aeruginosum. It's been treated with the antibiotic tobramycin in quite a high concentration. And you can see that while the antibiotic kills the, the majority of the surface of the biofilm, which is shown in red here, dead cells, you can see that there are these um, clusters, um, <coughs> structured um, clusters of bacteria that are, are completely protected against the antibiotic, antibiotic killing in this case. There are 10 to 3, 10 to 4 cells in, in, in each of these clusters. So what this means is that there are many persistent, hard to treat infections that are associated with biofilms. Uh, examples are chronic wounds and lung infection and cystic fibrosis. Uh, and very many um, healthcare associated costs um, that result from these biofilm infections. <coughs> so the basic science uh, discovery, if you, if you like, is that uh, there are mechanisms which bacteria that biofilms use to let go of <coughs> surfaces from time to time. And in, in transit, intrinsic biological processes that regulate biofilm detachment from surfaces. So we found that one of the signals for this bacterial detachment from surfaces is nitric oxide. Uh, and such that low doses uh, of non-toxic low doses of nitric oxide will cause biofilm dispersal. So this is a Pseudomonas originosa biofilm again, uh, treated with a range of antimicrobials here, so that these concentrations have no effect on the biofilm. But if you add a nitric oxide signal, what happens is you can induce dispersal of the biofilm with the signal alone, but in combination with these antimicrobials, you can cause almost complete killing and removal of the biofilm. So again, it's, it's non-toxic concentrations of nitric oxide. So this has led to a clinical anti-biofilm <coughs> strategy uh, that, that, we're, that we're using, such that the notion is that adjunctive uh, agents, such as nitric oxide, that uh, disrupt the biofilm, uh, will um, allow for the, the, the bacteria to the disperse at, at, well, they become sensitive to the, to the antibiotics again and can, can be cleared by conventional antibiotic treatments. So our focus for this strategy is in cystic fibrosis. Um, cystic, uh, chronic biofilm infections in cystic fibrosis uh, that are resistant to antibiotic treatments uh, and the associated damage to lung tissue uh, that uh, comes with those biofilm infections are the principal cause of mortality in cystic fibrosis patients. We have an urgent need for therapies uh, that are effective against biofilms in CF. Um, so we planned a, a, a proof of, of concept um, study um, whereby our patients would inhale nitric oxide gas overnight in order to expose the biofilms within the lung to, to nitric oxide. Um, this is what, uh, so this is actually um, sputum uh, from, uh, expectorated sputum from cystic fibrosis patients. This is what Pseudomonas aeruginosa biofilms look like to us in CF sputum. The clusters of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, roughly about 50 to 100 microns in diameter. And our methods to uh, image and analyze biofilms in sputum like this has been very, uh, what has led to some additional uh, projects, uh, NIHR TRC collaboration uh, and uh, pharma interest uh, in the form of the Wellcome Trust Seeding Drug Discovery Award. But our approach has been to has been targeted at CF. Uh, so we did some pre preclinical workup um, studies. So this is, again is expectorated sputum ex vivo from CF patients, and you can see that the addition of nitric oxide at low dose. Uh, can reduce the, uh, the, the numbers of these sort of cl clusters of uh, pseudomonas biofilm in, in the sputum. Um, so that's the nitric oxide signal alone. Uh, if you combine nitric oxide with antibiotics, so tobramycin and combination with cefdazidine will kill a proportion of the biofilm, but the, NO, the adjunctive NO treatment was very effective at killing uh, pretty much all of the cells uh, in, the, in the biofilm. 
So we developed a, a proof of concept clinical trial. It's a blinded, placebo-controlled pilot study. Um, 75 patients were enrolled to the trial. Uh, we recruited eventually 12 patients that were chronically colonized with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And what we saw was that these patients that inhaled NO overnight over a seven-day period showed a significant reduction in the, uh, the amount of biofilm in the lung, essentially. So this is above and beyond the, the standard treatment of antibiotics that all patients were receiving. We saw a reduction in the um, amount of biofilm in the CF lung. The clinical endpoints, the spirometry, also were trending towards benefit of the patient, um, but we need a much larger clinical trial to test for um, significance in the, in the spirometry data. So the, the final point that I wanted to make is that for a number of reasons it's not very practical to deliver nitric oxide to patients in hospital overnight over, over extended periods of time. But just to say that we're working on novel more targeted ways, and Ray mentioned um, these earlier, more targeted ways to deliver nitric oxide at the site of the bacterial infection. So in other words, when we uh, novel prodrugs, when they come into contact with the biofilm, will release NO and an antibiotic that in combination will kill the biofilm. And early studies uh, are showing that these molecules um, can induce dispersal of the biofilm alone, and in combination with antibiotics, are very effective at killing, um, uh, at killing biofilms. So we think that this is a putative, you know, <coughs> a, a putative approach to treat biofilms in CF. It just remains for me to thank um, a very large team that's involved uh, in this work. I can't, obviously can't do everybody in, individually, but in particular I'd like to thank Rob Howling and Katrina Cathy, who are the, the fellows responsible for most of this work. Uh, Sol Faust is the clinical uh, lead on, on the trial, and Ryan Paul Stewart. Thank you very much.